Hello, welcome to Shark Talk Live. It has been quite some time since we've been able to be with you in your homes, but it is such an honor and a privilege to be back. And tonight, we are extremely excited about our guest. Dad, why don't you go ahead and introduce us? I am guest. extremely excited. My boy from back in the day, uh, University of Michigan Hall of, uh, of Honor inductee, number 35 jersey, retired. Uh, represented this nation in the 1976 Olympic gold medalist under uh, great uh, college basketball, Dean Smith, uh, Phil Hubbard, University of Michigan living legend. Thank you so much, Phil, for joining us on Sharp Talk this evening. Yay, welcome. I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, we go way back, but um, the opportunity to uh, talk to you and see that you're doing well. I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to get on your lovely daughter. This is hand making you uh, walk the straight line, so I love it all. It's all good. <laughs> Amen. And of course, I've got to give an emphatic go blue. Hail to yeah. the victors. It's awesome to be in the presence of such a distinguished alumni. And like you said, it is uh, playoff time, right? Yes, it's uh, NCAA time. And, you know, we, we're we wishing the team the best. You know, we're excited. I'm excited. Hopefully, I get a chance to go to a game, you know, but uh, – I will. I will. But, you know, it's just always exciting when we have success, you know, and I, uh, you know, that's the, but both sports, but best, best, especially basketball, because that's my, that's my game. And that's the thing that gave me everything that I have today. So I'm, I'm excited for the guys. I'm excited for the coaching staff, Juwan. I'm excited for every, all the Michigan fans. You know, uh, Phil, if I remember correctly, I think it was your sophomore or junior season um, at Michigan, you guys went and finished second in the NCAA tournament, lost out to, I think, eventual champion Indiana. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. And, and actually, that was my freshman year. That's my first year I came there. We, we um, came from high school and we had, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I was excited, you know, to get to Michigan and play. And then that's the first time that they took two teams, started letting two teams in from the same, you know, same two bids. We had two bids and we came in second place and we end up uh, playing Indiana in the championship and they end up winning. But uh, it's exciting. It's always bringing back memories. Every time you see the NCAA come on, you know, they have that flashback. Then you have that disappointment of the loss, you know, but you have the disappointment of excitement of the game we won to get there too. So it, it, it's definitely a great time. Absolutely. And you guys accomplished, again, the second, uh, second uh, place finish. And tell us what you would uh, recommend or what advice would you give to the, this current Juwan Howard Michigan basketball team as they enter the NCAA tournament? I think, you know, you have to remember that you're going to, you have like six games, I think it's six games, is it six games you have to win? But I always said this from my high school, uh, college, there is going to be a game that you need a little luck, right? You need, you know, you got the skill and everything, but something, a turnover, something's going to happen that, help you get to the next the next game but you know you need to you need to play well but you need a little luck too because uh to get to that final game and get that championship but i know he has he'll have his guys prepared they've had a few injuries that popped up lately so he, he has the mentality as the coach next man up so the biggest thing i think of is try to relax and just go out and just win one at one game at a time you have to take one game at a time you know because uh, you can't look beyond the team you're playing. You just got to play the game that's in front of you. Absolutely. One game at a time. And, and one question, uh, another question as you were uh, sharing that popped up in, in my mind, uh, what do you attribute the success uh, that Juwan Howard has had as a rookie uh, coach with the University of Michigan? I think it's his, his, his uh, ability to relate, his ability to, you know, have that family atmosphere and make the players feel, you know, like, look, you're you're about you know valuable you know how that you know how you when you feel valuable when you're a young guy you know and the coach is uh supporting you patting you on the back not always doing a little bit of criticism but making sure that he's giving you the support you need but i think the biggest thing is that he's able to connect to the players on the court off the court and also with their families and so they their mothers and dads feel like hey i can send my son to the university of michigan they're going to be in great hands with juan howard and i think that the biggest thing is that he has the experience, even though he didn't have college experience, he had the experience of playing in the NCAA, playing college basketball, playing pro basketball. So a lot of young guys today, they want to hear that thing. Can I get to the pros? And he can, he can help them get, you know, some of them guys get to that level. So he has that connection and he has that leadership and that family atmosphere that he's built there 
that I think is just wonderful. Tremendous. Awesome hire. Awesome hire by you guys. Yeah. Congratulations, Rebecca. Yeah, well, I'd like to peel it back a little bit. When you first came on, you mentioned that basketball is a sport that you love. It has given you everything that you have. And so I'd love to know more about your formative years, where you grew up, and what really shaped your passion and love for the game during your formative year. That, that's a great question. The, the, the one I'm originally from Ohio. I grew up in Canton, Ohio. Oh, wow, well, okay. That's a pro football hall of fame. Exactly. Uh, well known for that, but... Uh, uh, in Canton, and when I was growing up, the, the high school was McKinley High School, and I always wanted to play for McKinley. I mean, that was my biggest thing. You know, I had watched the guys play. It was a guy, young man, and a young man at that time named Nick Weatherspoon. I knew Nick. He played for McKinley. He was like the star. He was a star. He went on to the University of Illinois and went on to the pros. But that was my biggest goal, Louis. I just wanted to get to high school and play for McKinley. Get that jacket, you know, they've given out coats, you know, had the bulldog on it and everything. But you know, that kind of, that was kind of the effort that I wanted to get there. But what I found out is that it's not easy. It wasn't easy, you know, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy because uh the biggest change for me came probably when I got, you know, to high school as a freshman. I was about six, I think I was six one, six one, and then um uh, I thought I was, you know, good, but I, we, we, we lost, we, we, I think we were 500, 15 and 15. That was one of the worst freshman teams. Then I go to JV next year. I'm going to go for varsity. I'm going out for varsity. So I go out for varsity and I never, I never, you know, he don't put me in practice. He don't put me in anything. You know, I, I'm just there watching. So I said, I asked him, could I go back and play JV? Well, you know, he said, yeah, you can go back and play JV. So I played JV. The JV team was good. The varsity team was so-so. And and then I got, you know, more confidence in myself, but I was still, I was still about six, maybe six, two. But the biggest thing happened from my sophomore to my junior year that summer. Um, I had a dedication that, that really came over me. You know, I, I had a so-called summer job, you know, I'm not a real summer job. It was, it was like you ride around Canton cutting grass and then for four hours. So they split it. I worked four hours and then I would go to the Y every day. Every day that summer, I went to the wide and shot. I don't care who was there. I played with people who was there. I played with old guys, young guys. I just played. I lifted so-called weights they had back in that day. And I, I did it every day, Louis, from the time I the time till I got back to school. And, and when I came back to school, the other thing that happened, I grew four inches. Really? Miraculously. Yeah, 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 I went from some six from about six two, I was at six. I was six seven. Wow. I was six seven. I was six seven, and uh, everybody was coming back, and it was um, everybody was coming back for that junior team that they had before. But um, so I was playing, and there was a guy named same name. Say his name was Phil Ship. Good guy. He weighed about two, maybe about two two twenty five, two thirty. I weighed about. 195 195 okay but i end up being the starting center on that team for the juniors everybody else was senior i was the only junior that started averaged about 10 points and 10 rebounds and we louis we never we never lost a game that year until we got to the state of ohio state wow. championship we went uh 20 with 25 and 0 and lost wow. in the state lost in the state championship so that's how my desire came in Canton because, you know, I my real goal was just to be on that McKinley team. You know, I, I didn't I didn't look further than that. At that time I didn't look further than that. But what happened now, after that junior year, I started getting letters. Hmm. Like letters from colleges. I mean, just just a you know, a bunch of letters start coming to me about, you know, going to college. You know, I was like, wow, you know, I, and I had never thought about all I just thought about was hey, I'm going to do I'm play here. But now I have opportunity maybe to go to college. So I have to fill out the questionnaires and uh, all the things. And I was getting a lot of a lot of questionnaires about, you know, grade point out. And then I didn't understand. There's another thing that I try to tell young kids, understand your grades, understand mm -hmm. how important education is to you. Understand that because, you know, Back in the day, I didn't really understand that. And nobody really came along and said, well, you need to make sure your grades are sharp. I said, I just need to be eligible to play. 
and I don't need that, you know, to be perfect, but I need, but it found out in the end, I need, I need to make sure that my grade point average was high enough for me to get into a major college, you know, and that was the thing that I had to work extra hard going into my senior year to get it up. But the other big jump came, Louis, from that junior year to my senior year. I averaged 10 points a game, okay? From, from my senior year, I averaged 25 points and 15 rebounds a game. Wow, 15 point from, jump in a year? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I went to 15 rebounds and, and 25, 25 points a game as a senior. So, you know, that, that was just a heck of a jump too. Like, you know, you talk about jump, you talk about jump now, uh, I want to go now. I, I get I can go to college, you know, but, but I never thought about it like that. I just thought about playing, you know, my minute you go back to shoot. I just wanted to play for McKinley, that's all I wanted to do. But now I got an opportunity to go to college on the basketball, you know. And uh, and now, um, the other thing too, I'll just make this sad announcement that we go back to the state. I'm the only senior, everybody else is juniors. And where did we lose? I lost. We lost. Two, I lost three games in in high school. I lost three games. Two of them was in the state, and one was my first year as junior. I only lost three games in in high school basketball for the whole t- two years. So I was on varsity. So, you know, it, it, now I see myself as a basketball player. I see myself as a chance to go to college. But that 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 kind of formed me. But in Canton, is you know, that's where it started at. That's where I got the feeling for the love for basketball. But now you get a chance to take that from a small town Canton, Ohio to the, the University of Michigan. And, I, you know, now I'm going to Michigan. I, I'll, I'll say something, too, about picking schools. You know, here's a, here's, a, here's a story I don't say a lot. I'm from the state of Ohio, okay? Yeah, those are fighting I, words. I, 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 grew up, I grew up watching <laughs> Ohio State football. So mm-hmm. no, I mean, I, I, I thought actually I was going to go to Ohio State. I grew up watching Ohio State football. I was a Ohio State football fan, you know, because I was from Ohio. I mean, that's that's all they did. So I thought I was going to Ohio State and end up going to Michigan. And it was like, I always tell Thomas this, you know, I can't root for you. I just got, you know, the first couple of years, I can't root for y'all. I'm from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is, but it, it was, it changed. That changed too. I became a Michigan, a Michigan guy. But just to tell you how hard that was for me to go from, High Ohio to Michigan, but it was the best choice for me. Michigan was the best choice for me. But uh, well, look at you now, look at you now <laughs> representing the U of M, and yes. what, what a self-made story that is. Sounds like you taught yourself uh, the game of basketball, and uh, and you know one of the things I, I'd like to know, uh, given the the illustrious high school, college, and pro career that you had, mm. what what do you think uh, or what attributes you think uh, continue contributed to the uh, the immense success that you had uh, at all levels in, in the game of basketball? I think it was the work ethic, Louis, that I, I, I became to think about, you know, that uh, nobody was going to outwork me. There's going to be people that's going to be maybe more athletic than you, more jump higher than you, run faster than you, quicker than you. But I knew that I was going to work them. They knew that I was, you know, I was just going to work my butt off against them, you know. Cause you, you just didn't have, I didn't, couldn't have every super athletic trait. I run back as I jump high, you know, I, I got quick hands, but you know, somebody's going to be better. But I did say to myself, I was going to work my butt off. And, and that's what I did the work ethic that I, I strive to, you know, to be in sports and I, and the passion I had for the game of basketball was just a, just a high passion, a high level that I never thought, you know, it would get me to where I got, but my passion for the game and my work ethic, and then you know to take it from college to the next level. But college is something that I always say this: all my teammates in college are still my teammates, okay? Because we had we we came together to college. We still know each other. We still talk, you know. And then I, I when I got to the professionals, I just that's more of a business. You know what I'm saying? Because we're in a competitive field. You know, I'm challenging, you know, here's my job. And the guy wants the same job that I want. So we're now we're competing, you know. So it's a little bit more of like, I, I, I want you here, but I'd rather stay here than you can go home. 
you know, but it right, got right. you, you and you know, it made you a competitive field because we're, we're competing for the same thing, but, and you don't have the same friendship that you develop in college, you know, that the guys in college, we went three years together, four years together, and we're still friends. And in the pros, you know, we're, it's such a competitive field. Sometimes we don't have a chance to build that relationship for long term because it's more of a yeah. Uh, acquaintance. I say it's more of an acquaintance than a uh, friendship. It's more of acquaintance because, but this is, it just happened that way. But I thought my determination and my work ethic made me uh, the player that I am and made me want to get to the next level, you know. Yeah, and I want to really talk about that work ethic and that passion and the fusion of those two things. I know being an alum, of the University of Michigan that they have a we have a very rich sports tradition and heritage so for you to be inducted into the Hall of Honor and for your number 35 to be retired I mean that is absolutely outstanding so can you talk about what it feels like to be a, a Michigan li living legend and to be honored in such a way by the institution yeah I think I think there was a thing that I have to talk about the Jersey retirement first. Tommy Amaker, who was the coach uh, at the time, and he was a coach at, he used to play at Duke, was a player at Duke and coached at Duke. He became the Michigan coach. And he kept saying, we have no jerseys retired here. We have no jersey retired. We have a number of players, Cassie Russell, Rudy Tom Jarvis, Glenn Rice, myself, you know, uh, even the Fab Five, you know, we, we have them, had no jerseys retired. You know, and they're saying, well, how could that be with all this history they have? So he started pushing for uh, players to get their jersey retired and be in the Raptors. And he they've only picked, I think there's only been with myself, Rudy, uh, Kazzy, and Glenn Rice. There's only four, four guys that have their jersey retired. So I feel honored to be in that group and to be a part of that, you know, illustrious uh how about i say a group of guys you know yeah absolutely and and it, that's how it started but i think there's a number of players that deserve it too but you know just because they started so late at doing it you know basketball it, you know you see a lot of other places they got jerseys everywhere in, up in the rapture but michigan that hasn't and i think that maybe juan maybe roger and rose you know at some time and get their jersey up there it'd be nice but it's just a part of it, but being honored at the, the other one, the Michigan Honors Club, that that's big because you know you yeah. you see that uh, how Michigan formed me as a person, and, and I'll say that you know it taught me how you know you go there as a young man, and you leave there as a, as a young adult, you know because it's the first time you ever live by yourself, you know, and you and you have to run around, you have to learn how to pay bills, you have to learn how to eat. You know, just different stuff that I never check. Oh, I gotta get a checking account, checking account, <laughs> checking account. You know, but you, those things, you know, you all formulated that at the University of Michigan. And the people I met there uh, that took care of me and guideline me and my teammates that I made, like I said, for my teammates, we are always bonded with that um, U of M Shield, and we'll always be together. But it was just a great honor, and uh, it's always, you know. Uh, great to know that you know nobody wear the jersey unless they ask me and then i can i have to let it go <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe the decision is yours and only uh, yours the decision will be yours and only yours yes, the decision will be mine yes yes it will be yeah tell us but, talk to us about johnny Orr. you talked about how you know michigan you went in as a young man and you left as a young adult talk about yeah. coach johnny Orr. he was your coach at, at michigan yeah, right he was he was he was my coach and um, I, I'll say this. I went to Michigan and, and, you know, I played center in high school. I always tell them this story and they're recruiting me. And I said, look, I don't want to play center when I get to college. They said, well, you don't have to play center. You know, you'll play forward. You play forward for sure at Michigan. You play so well. And then, uh, I said, fine. Everybody I asked, I said, they said, you could play forward. I get to Michigan, Wayman Britt. And John Robinson are returning, returning forwards. Okay, Raymond Wayne is a senior, and John is a junior. So guess so. I get there. The only spot open is the center spot. That's the only spot open. You know, as, as freshman, I was like, well, I never said it. No, I just, I just, uh, I'm just gonna play. I'm just happy to be playing. Didn't look at it like that, but you know, but 
far as coach or uh he was great to me you know he, he helped me become you know a better player he never they always said coach never yells at you i said no nah, he yells at me but he didn't you know he just let me be me he let me play you know let me uh make mistakes let me learn from that type of stuff and he helped me just be a, a, a way better player than i thought i could be you know at that time way better he was a good guy too he's funny very very funny coach i mean very always had jokes you know some of them you don't want to can't say on the air but always had good jokes you know but was a heck of a coach heck of a coach and uh, really a great guy him and my other guy that that really helped me get to michigan was bill frieder bill frieder was assistant yeah. and bill and bill it was if it wasn't for bill i don't think i would have would went to michigan he was the one that really pushed me to get there that was that was big it was big it was a big thing it was a big thing. yeah and i well, you know we've talked a lot especially getting the opportunity to interview sports legends as yourselves and it sounds like both coaches and teammates are what really sets your experiences apart you know and it's a rich camaraderie that you all develop during those years in which you are blood sweat tearing and you know just forging ahead together in so it's always neat to be able to reflect on those individuals who made such an indelible impact, you know, in your experience. And another experience that I know we both would love to talk about, you are actually the second uh, gold medalist that we've gotten the privilege to interview. So I know that you represented this country after you left the University of Michigan and you won a gold medal at the Olympic Games. So we'd love for you to share more of your experience and what that was like for you. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm on this. You know, I, this one thing, though, you know, this, here's what happened. I actually won that medal when I was a freshman, after my freshman year. So oh, this, really? This that, was yeah, because you're in your how, here's how, yeah, yeah. Here's how it went. It had me, myself, and Ricky Green was going to the tryouts. Okay, Ricky was a, a, a junior. I was a freshman when I was going. So, I I figured. I wasn't going to make the team. I could tell my kids, I tried out for the Olympics. I got the letter. They sent all this to me. Uh, and I, I, I thought it would be a good experience. And then I'd just go home. But um, go down there uh, to North Carolina, uh, Coach Smith, um, it's Coach, Coach Smith, Coach John Thompson, Guffrey, they were the assistant coaches, you know, just legends there itself. And I go there and, and – I'm playing, I think I'm playing okay, but it's like it's like 60 guys there. You know, the gym is full of you know a bunch of people. So I don't really know. So they said they're gonna pick 15 guys out of that 60 to come back and then you know come to North Carolina and play, you know, practice for two months and then pick down to 12. So um man, I I'd say, well, I'm going home. I'll, I'll be I have a good summer. And and I see my buddy named Johnny Davis, he's from Detroit too. He went to Dayton, and and Johnny says, "You made the team." I said, "What?" He said, "You made the team." I said, "How do you know that?" He said, "I, I got, I know the, the list. They, they already got the list out." He said, um, "We both going back. I'm going home. This is not. We're at the airport." He said, "You made the team." I said, "Are nah, you lying, Johnny?" He said, "No." He said, "You, you watch what I tell you. You get home, you're gonna get a call." And when I got home, they called me saying, "You need to come back because." You wow. are in the final. You're in the final fifteen, and I, I thought for sure that Ricky was going to make the team, not me. And I made and I made the team, and it was just a great experience because at that time, it was all amateurs. You know what I'm saying? You, you know how they have the NBA right. players playing now. We were right. all college players. We were all amateurs, and we were playing against men, and we were coming off. The Russians had beat the United States uh, back in '72. And we had lost the gold medal game. So it, it was kind of like a revenge thing, but uh, we wanted to win the medal. I still, and it was just that, it was just an experience you can never take away. I mean, that's something that uh, I cherish, you know, because every time the Olympics come back on, you know, you got yeah. that, I got that flash, you know, I was there, I got that medal, you know, but it just was a great experience, you know, to have a chance to play for your country, have a chance to win a gold medal and to still that, that's something to you you know you always talk about i was there you know olympics come on no matter if winter olympics whatever I, I i have a gold medal but the experience was great and i i wouldn't you know give it up for nothing in the world but it just was great it was a great time you know 
Well, that's that's tremendous. Uh, that's awesome. Congratulations. And you represented this country very well. Uh, tell us who were some of the notable uh, college players, amateurs, as you say, that you guys oh, didn't yeah. have. Yeah, let me, let me tell you that. Uh, we had uh, Adrian Dantley. AD. <laughs> AD was on there. Now we had this is the, the dilemma. But we had four players from North Carolina. OK, we had uh, Phil Ford. Phil Ford. Mitch now, Kupchak. Mitch Kupchak. Rupchak. Tommy Lagarde Tommy Lagar and Walter Davis. Now, Coach Smith took a lot of heat for that. He took a lot of heat for taking his own players, you know, but he wasn't the only one voting. You know, there, there was other people that voted too. And then we had my uh, two players from Indiana, Quinn Buckner and Scott May, and Kenny Carr, Tate Armstrong, myself, and Steve Shepard, you know. Uh, and, you, you know, that's, that's a group you don't, don't forget neither because, you know, we done something special. But you know that was that was us playing against men. You know we go play the other teams. They had beer, full beards, and and they were just you know physically big, you know physically bigger than us. But you know we we just worked our butt off in uh, in that short time. But you know that's you know that was when amateurs were amateurs. So not like now when you play the um, NBA guys play is a high level. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, did you guys out uh, athletic them? Did you run them? Did you run them up and down the court? Is that how you beat I them? Think we, they... I think I think we we had a little bit of everything. We just played solid defense, you know. And was, we had two months to prepare, and we played. We played. We did outrun them, and we played solid defense. And we you know we, we we just was able to, to mesh together in that two month period. We had to get to come together, you know, and win those. Win your pool, your pool, as they say, is like AAU now. You know, you go play uh, the pool to take the top two teams, and we we did. We had a good defensive team, and we we had good quickness. I played. I didn't start. I played in every game, um, and you know, averaged about I think seven points or something like that. But it, it was still was a great experience. You know, just to be able to say that um, I think I was one of the youngest Olympians at that time to ever make the team. Wow! So, Congratulations. Thank you. Quite the designation. And so we've been able to talk about your time at Kinley High School, right? And then yeah. obviously University of Michigan. But we've we've kind of teetered about the fact that you played in the pros as well for, what, nine yeah. years, I believe, for two teams, yeah. the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah. You went back home and did great things there. And you yeah. came here to the Detroit Pistons. So I'd love to know more about your time playing um, in the, the National Basketball Association. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you this. I'll give you. Uh, both, but you know, I, I I was drafted by Detroit. Okay, and I, I, nobody always, always says this. They say, "Well, who?" You know, I got drafted, and the coach at this time, you guys know, was 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 Dick Vitale. Oh he wow! The, yeah, he was the coach of the Pistons when I got drafted. You know, he he had just been there, so he was the coach. And uh, the funny thing was, he got fired before the season was over. Oh wow! <laughs> he had been there, so. But you know, he, I always, I always thank him because he gave me an opportunity. You know what I'm saying, Louis? Louis like he, he drafted me number 15 in the first round. Uh, wow. But uh, my, myself, Greg Kelser, you know, Greg Kelser, and another guy, Roy Hamilton. They had three first round picks. I was Roy Hamilton, UCLA. I watched Roy. Yeah, in yeah Roy, Roy, you you guy, Roy Hamilton. Yeah, Roy. Hey, Greg Roy was on their show. Yeah, yeah, Roy. So I was Greg was four. Roy was 10. I was 15. Wow. The three first round picks, you know, oh, and uh, and then, but the the funny thing was, you know, you, as a kid, now I'm a, I'm a, I didn't really want to play pro basketball until I got to college. You know, you remember I talked about McKinley, and then I realized yeah. once I got to Michigan, I had a chance to play professional basketball. So now I'm I'm excited to have that opportunity to play professional basketball, but um, I'm kind of sad because I had I left early. So um, I get to the Pistons. I don't get in the games. Okay, I, I, this is a hell of an adjustment. But think about this: I've never sat on the bench until I got to the pros. Wow! I, mean, I, started, I started junior high. I started high school. I started college. And the first time I ever sat on the bench was in the pros. And you talk about I was a whack job. I was probably a whack job trying to trying to mentally, you know, stay focused on that bench, you know, because I said, I've never done that before. I was always playing. So, you know, there's adjustments, you know, coming to sports level. But uh, I still got to play. But that just was like, 
wow, you know, just think about all those years I played, I've never, that was the first time I ever sat on the bench was when I got in the pros. That was the first time. And that was a heck of an adjustment. What did that huh? feel like? How did you how did you deal with, with that, that? That did yeah, well, Louis, that did not feel good. Okay, that did not feel good. I just I'll tell you honestly, I didn't I didn't deal with it at first because you know I, I could have went back to Michigan. So I was mad at myself because I thought I could stay at college. And I had left early. So I was mad about that, you know, but I this opportunity I wanted to play, but I, you know, just a lot of things going through your mind, you know. But then NBA is a long season. You know, it's a long season, it's 82 games, you know. Somewhere down that line, I'm going to get a shot. I'm going to get a shot to play, and I got a shot to play. You know, and then I started playing, and I felt better about it. You know, it's amazing how my attitude went from grumpy to the the happy, just the happy-go-lucky guy now because I was playing the sport I love. But the thing was, it, it was tough. It was tough on me mentally, and I, I had to really learn how to be – the same person all the time. And what I mean by that is uh, there was like a moment, I'll give you this example. So when I wasn't playing and I get on the bus, I wouldn't speak to the coaches. <laughs> I would walk right by them, you know, I would walk right by them and um, not, say, not, not say nothing. So then when I started playing, now how does that look? Now that I'm playing, now I'm happy. I got it. So I told myself I would always be the same guy. Whether I played or not, I would speak. I would keep the same focus from from then on, because you know the same thing could happen again where I won't be playing as much. So I had to get my mental together. That's what I say all the time. So now when I get on the bus, I speak anyway. Hey, coach, how y'all doing? You know, so they never know that I was ah oh, mad as mad as heck. They never know that. But now right. you had to keep your mental the same as you know the focus, and that's how you know. But the pros. That's how I started, you know, and then um, I, I had a number. I said a number. I always say this, too. I said a number of how many years I wanted to play. And I said I wanted to play 10 years. Like I set that number in my mind. And every summer I worked hard. I worked. I, I was working. To, when three years went by, another three years went by. And now I'm getting in the last. So that's you know, six. So now I'm in the last. And so I've got four more to get to. And I, I worked so hard in my mind that I needed to get to 10. And when I got to 10, then I got to, you know, went through the next four, was able to make it. When I got to 10, I lost a little drive. I lost because I, I had set that goal to push myself to get to 10. I said, I should have put it at 12. <laughs> I should have put it at 12. But that's, you know, that's just, you know, have to set goals. And, and I set a few goals and I, and I accomplished them. But the, the pro life was cool. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. But, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, and you yeah. know about that, Louis. You know how that. You know well, how that well, goes. I, as you were sitting here sharing, I remember. You know, my goal was to play uh, ten to twelve years in the NFL, and uh, and I ended up uh, thirteen. I got hurt in my thirteenth season, and you know, mentally, since I had al already surpassed my goal of twelve years max, that you know, I didn't want to come back for the fourteenth. Right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and my my thinking was, you know what? I'm a little older now. I'm, I'm injured. I'd have to rehab. And if I can't be the best at what I do, I don't want to do it at all. Right. You know, I didn't want to just hang on and make a few extra dollars for another two or three years, which I could have done if I couldn't go out there and perform, and perform at the high level that I was accustomed to performing. Yeah, I think that's that's what you're saying. So you set that number too. We set numbers and we get there and then you lose that hunger, hunger, that real hunger. You have it still there, but it's gone. A little bit yeah. right yeah you know what i love in, in today's day and age you know there's a, a big push or thrust around um players being more than athletes right and using the platforms that they have to really be catalysts for social change and to you know highlight different injustices and things that are happening in the world so phil how do you use the platform that you've been given and all of these decorated things that you've been able to do in your lifetime how are you now using that today to be an agent of change i, I think you know i try to give back to my hometown we done some food drives you know i've always gave back to Kent where i grew up we've done some things like that but i i i'll say this before you know back in the day i think we we were a different type of athlete than the athlete today i think you know we didn't have that freedom of speech 
speech that they had, you know, to speak so much on a lot of things. I think we felt like if we went too far out and it cost us our job, you know, we felt right, like, you know, right. Right, to now it's a lot more, these young men are a lot more engaged and, you know, they, they, they took the, the power that we help them get to, you know, all of us, you mean your dad, we built that, that built that power. Now they understood they took it to another level and they're speaking and they're doing things and, you know, a little bit different, which they're supposed to, you know, they, they're using the power that we didn't really have, or we had, but we weren't able to use it till now, but they're able to speak their time and use their power. But me, as far as giving back, I try to get back to my, um, my city, Ken, me and a couple of the guys that everybody went to McKinley high school, football, basketball players. Uh, we tried to set up some, um, some food drives, um, and we're still doing it in Canton for the people right now. And, you know, that's just a part of the way of, of trying to use the voice of change, you know, because there's a lot of people out there that need, you know, a lot of things, but we never knew how hard this pandemic would hit us and the number of people that would need food, uh, shelter, anything that, you know, you can give them. But we had to, we, we searched around and we got some, um, the, the nice food drives for them that's going on now every twice a month no, and uh, until next month but you know that that's a social change by by, by just the, the era but i just think you know our voices if we if we had to do it over again we probably change our voices and be stronger but i think we just felt like uh you know we got too far out of line that you were militant or you were you know, fighting a, a different charge or something. But, you know, I think that's the difference in the young guys. They speak up now. They speak up. And, and, you know, and let's not forget, Phil, you know, the difference with the kind of money that these athletes are making now, yes. Yes. they're business partners with these owners. Yes. So they have more of a say, you know, from a business standpoint because of the millions of dollars that they're signing for. Um, I, they have more power, more influence because of the kind of monies and benefits that they command. Than, than we ever could imagine having had when we played. Well, that's so that's so true, Lou. That's so true that you know that the dollar speaks for itself and it helps you speak to people too to have that kind of leverage. But I think you know it, it takes about. Um, I think about it all the time. That's one of the things, like you said, that that, that speak that money that they're making now and that that leverage and they're just a little bit more they're aggressive. They're aggressive. That's something that we that they took you know from us, but they just took it to another level taking it to another level you know and i think that's, that's the change that's the change of a, of a basketball or sport player football basketball even the football game we can go talk about colin kaepernick before and everybody now they they, they talk to him they talk about it. they're not afraid to stand up for him and fight for him you know what i'm saying a couple of years ago they were like oh no 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 but now it's, it's, you know, they're, they're fighting they're, they're letting their voice be heard they want you know they want change and we all need change yeah absolutely mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. And, uh, you know, as you were talking, uh, if, if there was ever a time where, you know, uh, some of the in injustices now are played out uh, in front of television cameras and, and we see all races of people, all ethnicities see that there is a, a problem, a social injustice problem here um, in this country. And, and we need to stand up uh, and let our voices be heard if we are going to affect change. So this is the time and season for those uh, those athletes to stand up and be a, a, boy, a voice of reason and, and change uh, for all of us in, in the communities across this nation. Yeah, I think that's that's so true. I think it's so true. And I think, you know, we, we've seen a lot. And, you know, they we know, look, like you always said, you know, it can't affect us, you know, now. We're not, we're old enough now to know that, hey, we, we're not going to let that affect us. We have something to say, we're going to say it. We're going to be, we're going to say, we're going to speak our piece and we're going to work for the right things and try to help these people out here that's doing the wrong thing and try to you know, make, tell them that it's a better, it's a better way. You know, it's a better way. Can't keep doing the same way. It's a better way. Yeah. How much, how much uh, diverse or uh, digressing back to uh, uh, NBA basketball. Uh, I'm curious to know uh, the game has changed significantly since you played. How much of the, the, the three-point uh, game that they have now in the NBA, how much has that changed the game? And, and what are your thoughts about that, the difference between when you played and the NBA game? I, I, think, I think the biggest thing is, like, I go back to when I played. It was a physical type game, and it was aggressive. Uh, we didn't, you know, we shot a few threes, not like that. 
but we, you know, it was very physical, you know, and aggressive. And I think the NBA wanted a more faster paced game. They wanted scoring. They wanted, you know, dunks. They wanted that. So the three point line now is like when I was on a fast break, we all running to get layups. Okay. Right, right. Now when they're on a the fast break, they're running to get three pointers. You know, they're, they're, spotting up. they're spotting up. You know, it just changed the game. You know, never we never would have did the coach. We run to the three point line back and I did coach be trying to get somebody in there for you right quick. <laughs> you know, but it, it, it's changed the game. It made the game a lot faster, a lot more exciting. You know, the knock down threes and everybody, and also made this thing uh, took the center out sometime a little bit because now everybody wants this so called stretch four to stretch five and what I mean by that somebody that can make an outside shot you know used to be get in the post but now everybody wants to shoot threes you don't want to get in the post so it's changed the game a lot you know and some of it's good and it's good for the game we know to play fast but um you know you, you, eventually it, it could come back come back around you have some more post play but right now all the young kids because I'm actually I work at a high school too here in uh, Paul the six one of the high schools here in Virginia uh, Catholic school, the great, you know, and we have a great basketball team, a great team, you know, uh, players that get got, got scholarships to Duke and uh, a number of colleges. Oh, and, and they they all want to be able to knock down outside shots. They want to do, you know, it's different, you know, but, you know, just, you know, being around them and, and seeing a different uh, way they play the game and the way the NBA plays the game. Everybody's first time now is a three pointer. That's, that's got to make a three pointer. Got to have that for your game. You can't just be an inside guy like we were before. But it, it's good for the game. It's, uh, it's the way the game's being played. I ain't mad at them. You know, it's their time. So they'll, I'll enjoy watching it. They'll enjoy making it. You know, there's there's nothing more beautiful than watching a low post game where you, as a, as a low post player, uh, impose your will, use your body, you know what I'm saying, and use angles to score on the defender. There's nothing more beautiful than a, a properly executed low post uh, NBA basketball player. In my that's, yeah, that's a beautiful way to put it. But now you know, they can say that y'all are a dinosaur. They're trying to say that the <laughs> low post game is a dinosaur, a Campbell. Let's say a Campbell, you know, this is, but it is, but it's still, it, there's areas for it, you know, but again, it's just the game has been expanded so much with the three pointer, but it's nothing like you have to get the ball inside sometime and make them double team because that now you have shooters. But, you know, if you don't like LeBron, you know, being from LeBron's from Akron, if you go inside, he goes inside. If they don't come get him, he going to the basket or he'll kick it out. So it, it, it's definitely room for the inside game. It's just that everybody loves to see a three pointers. The greatest of all time, Kobe or LeBron or Michael? And, you know, they all great. It's different, man. You know, here's the thing, too. I'll tell you a story. And um, LeBron is from Ohio. So I was, LeBron is a different type of guy. He's big, strong, uh, fantastic, you know, just does everything well. Uh, I love him. I love his game. Um, so, but Michael, too, was a different type of player. Not that big, you know, great thing. Just great carry. You know, friend, I know him. I know him well enough. And I always tell you this, my last game in the NBA, and I hate to always say this, that you know that shot that they always show him doing like that against the Cavs? You ever seen that? Yeah, I know you've seen it, Lou. You've seen it. Yeah. And yeah. It makes, yeah. you know, it's an old shot. He makes that shot. I'm on that Cavs team oh, that, that wow. he made that shot. Of. So I'd be like, wow. That was my oh, last good. game. And I can never forget that now. That was my last <laughs> game in the NBA. That was my last game in the NBA. But, again, Kobe, I think he's one of the um, – best game shot makers, closers, like winning game shots that I've seen. And, and I had a chance that I worked for, I coached, you know, in the NBA too for um, yeah, I remember 12, 12 years. And I coached the Lakers D-League team. And I had a lot of interaction with Kobe, you know, just, just amazing type guy. And, you know, just unbelievable player. You know, his commitment and his determination was unbelievable. You could just see he it. Came in. He fit the mantra of the assassin. He was yeah. an assassin on that basketball court. Cold blooded, cold yes. blooded assassin. Yeah. Yes. And so I, I love them all, you know, but uh, they, they, they stand for different, you know, it just always say, got to pick one. You ain't got to pick one. It just, I'll take them all. Yeah. 
you see the greatness in them all, and that's a beautiful thing. So as we're wrapping up here, obviously we are in the midst of March Madness. I know, of course, we're rooting for our hail to the victors. You have to root for it. Let me get my M. Let me get my M. I know, yeah. Make sure we see it. Nice and proud. Let me get my M. Let me get my M. Let me get my M. Absolutely. Go blue. Hail to the victors. What are you predicting for this year's tournament? Well, you know, look, there's, <laughs> I've never, I've never went against my university. I don't care who they were playing. I don't care okay. what the <laughs> odds are, what, what the odds are. So, you know, I only go one way. I only bleed blue. So I'm, I'm a Michigan guy on that. I think Michigan going to win it all. I mean, I think that when they're not a number one seed, I just, that's just, you know, that's not what I do. I don't. I don't root against my school after I had such great time there, and um, I wish Juwan them the best, and I hope they win the national championship. I mean, it would be great um, for the university, for him, for the players, for the fans, and for myself. I think you know. But I'm a Michigan guy. You know, I don't, there's no. I don't waver that. I don't waver. I don't waver. You know. I, so when I put my bracket down, I already put. I already go to. That's a good thing. Well, I'm still a UCLA man, and uh, we're going to play. I forget who we're going to play. An 11th gonna play, seed. I'm going I'm to tell you, you're going to play Michigan State tomorrow in the playing game uh, early. So they, they play Michigan State tomorrow. I'll tell you that. Did uh, they win that, that game? The get in no, game? no, it's, it's, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. They oh, it's tomorrow. Play it's tomorrow. Yeah, they play tomorrow because, uh, you know, all the COVID stuff, they – they don't start till tomorrow. And okay. Then, uh, then, uh, you know, so, you know, they, they had a good turnaround. They had a good turnaround. I mean, the basketball team had to bounce around. You got to get that football team together. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Tell me about yeah, it. hey, you're telling us. <laughs> We're right there with you. <laughs> you're telling, you're telling, I, guess, I guess I shouldn't say much. <laughs> <You're telling. laughs> yeah. No, the truth is the truth. Yeah, I think all you need is a set of eyes to be able to understand yeah. that. <laughs> But, you know, Phil, I mean, it's been great to chat with you this evening. And again, to really just take time to acknowledge your very decorated standout yes, yes. gold medal, two NBA teams, wonderful career in the Hall of Honor at the, the University of Michigan. I would just love, you know, you talked about your work ethic and your passion and the greatness um, that you exude and that you see in others. What What is it that you desire for your legacy to be? Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's there. I just think to, to be known as a, a good person, I think a good, I always know as a good, but pretty good basketball player, but just as a good person do, you know, that uh, I, I tried to treat people the way I wanted to be treated, you know, or I tried to coach kids the way I, I wanted to be coached, you know, and that, that's the same way, you know, so um, that is the legacy I wanted to be the most that, I, I would treat people the way the way that I wanted myself to be treated. And like I said before, I'm coaching these kids now the way I would want them to coach myself. But that I think the legacy of the both is that I gave it all. I'm always going to give it all to the end. And, you know, my desire is to um, make sure that we uh, – I leave something. If it's just a – positive to talk, you know, on these kids that I'm touching now. I, lead, I give them a positive uh, uh, idea of what they can achieve if they stick with the school. You don't forget about the books. You know, that's a big key. And, you know, the sports are, are great and they've been great avenues, but you've got to understand that uh, someday or one day they will take that football, that basketball, baseball from you and uh, you have to be able to have a, another avenue to go down and that's what education and, and those type of things come in but the legacy i want to leave is that you know i'll give them the path that uh help them get there they just need to make sure we'll see if they want to go down that road you know so great message. Legacy there great yeah. great message absolutely and you're doing a wonderful job of uh of representing not only the university of michigan uh but but hub hub yeah. really back. proud of you Remember when you would come to uh, Arizona, you'd give me some tickets. Yeah, um, yeah, you go that. I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if you were coaching or playing, but I do remember. I think you know, I was playing at first. I think I first started playing, then it was coaching. But I think I was playing. I was still playing because you know, um, I was playing. Yeah, that coach. Then I, I think it might have been coaching too because I was coaching. Yeah, you you give me tickets a couple times, and then I certainly appreciate it. 
I always bragged about uh, Phil Hubbard from University of Michigan, my boy with the Cavaliers, with the Pistons, et cetera, et cetera. And it's great to, to hear that you're doing well and you're doing wonderful things in the community. Uh, you look great. You don't look like you're, how old are you now, 65? I'm 64. <laughs> You've only got him by don't, don't don't rush me. I only got him by a few months. <laughs> coming, well, it's coming. Early birthday it's coming. You. coming, you know. Yeah, happy early birthday, and we thank you so very much uh, for agreeing to uh, be on Sharp no Talk. Man. Anytime, man. You guys are doing great. I enjoyed it. Um, I used to be a, a hold back, but I let a lot of stuff go today because you guys did it. Pull was able to pull it out of me and set me up. So it, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, we appreciate you, brother. We love you. We're going to be praying for you. Yeah, God. Um, Same here. Thank Same you here. so much. Thank you so much. And Rebecca, closing uh, thoughts, comments? Oh, yeah. Just really enjoyed being in the presence of living legends. And of course, uh, go blue, the leaders and the best. Hail to the victors. So we had Greg Kelser on a few weeks ago. And of course, he was representing for Michigan State. So it's nice yeah, to. Like, yeah, that, that'd be funny because you know I I'm, I got it closed though, but it's funny and you say Greg and and me and Greg went from enemies to friends, the best. Of friends. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta <laughs> yeah, love it. You guys played together. You were drafted uh, in the first round with the Pistons. Yeah, but we know he would be in college. We would rivals. Yeah, nemesis, right? Exactly. Nemesis. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now we're, we're, we're best. We're best of friends. So it's good. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, again, we appreciate you spending some time with us this evening. We know all of our viewers were inspired and educated and just enlightened by you showing up tonight. So we, again, are very thankful. Of course, we're wishing the best for our team. Go yes. Blue. Phil Hubbard, ladies and gentlemen, number 35, University of Michigan Hall of Honor, Olympic champion, gold medalist, and longtime family friend. Thanks again, Phil. Thank you, guys. Yeah, please, right. uh, please hey, hang right, on with please. before you hang up. I want to ask you something real quick but after we get off there. All righty. Well, thank you all so much for joining us this evening on Sharp Talk. Again, it's always an honor and a privilege to come before you all. Uh, we look forward to additional interviews and in the season three to begin. Dad, do you have anything else that you'd like to say? Uh, just stay encouraged. Uh, stay safe. Uh, you and your loved ones. And uh, until next time, thanks for joining us. Peace. Amen. May the Lord bless you, keep you, be gracious to you, lift up the light of his countenance unto you, and give you all peace. Take care, and we'll see you next time on Sharp Talk.